Welcome back to another episode of Open RCT2 Tutorials. Today's video is the third episode of my water park series, where I show you how to build your very own water parks in Roller Coaster Tycoon. Previously, I showed you how to build a wave pool as well as a lazy river. But in today's episode, I'm going to show you how to build a water slide tower. It's basically a combination of slides, but it's operating as one ride. So there's only one queue line. All of the slides are actually part of the same ride. So it's really nifty to kind of reduce the amount of queue lines you have in your park. Just have one giant combo slide tower. It's using the same principle as I used in my giant slide tutorial. So if you're familiar with that, this should be a really easy tutorial. But to get started, we're basically going to use a water slide and I'm just gonna make a nice gentle slope down here. I'm gonna add some water here at the bottom and then we do need to turn on some cheats. So we're going to turn on the allow chain lifts on all track pieces, the allow arbitrary ride type changes and disable vehicle limits. So now I can change the ride type to the vertical drop coaster because that will allow us to add some brakes. So let's do a brake run of 18 miles per hour, drop it down to nine and then do four miles per hour for the third brake. And then we can build our station. So now I should be able to, uh, with the dinghy boats, I should be able to test it in the ghost mode right here. So let's see how that works out. And just a really nice gentle slide here. Uh, the brake run, that's a little too fast. I mean, it's really up to you how you want the brakes to be, but I'm gonna do nine miles, then 13, and then 18. So uh, that should work a little bit nicer. But essentially, this would be all you need to do to have an operating water slide. Uh, if there was the water slide operating mode or one-way operating mode, which is in the works for OpenRCT2, but at this time, it is not in the game. So we're going to have to uh, work around that to get the vehicles to return. So what we basically need to do here uh, with the vertical drop track is leaving the station. We're gonna do a flat to steep slope here underground. So you need to turn on the disable clearance checks. So the dinghies will just disappear underground. So we will build that here and then we need to eventually have that track uh, flatten out and then curve around and reconnect with the station piece. So what we can do now is backwards from the station, make sure you have the chain lift turned on and we're gonna do some vertical track here going straight into the ground and then we're gonna flatten out and then we're gonna turn off the chain lift for this turn piece and then we will eventually connect it back. So now we have a complete circuit loop so we can actually change it to the dinghy slide. You can see what it looks like here and all of the vertical track is invisible because the dinghy slide doesn't have that but it works really nicely as a full circuit ride here. So if you wanted, you could build a bunch of different rides just like this, but to make it all operate as one ride, we need to delete the stations for now. So just put in some flat track in place of the two stations. So there goes the second station, just flat track there. And now I'm going to open up the tile inspector and I'm going to copy this one right here. And I'm just going to move over a little bit and paste it uh, where I want to have my second track begin. And I'm gonna do one more here, so I might need to widen that pool a little bit. Uh, but that is what I wanna have, three slides all next to each other. So now changing it back to the vertical drop coaster, we can add the brake runs in for these other tracks. So I'm gonna do the brakes at nine miles per hour, 13 miles per hour, and then 18 miles per hour. So nine, 13, 18. Next, I wanna update the color schemes. This will just make it easier later on. So I want the middle track to be color scheme two, or color scheme one, and then the third track to be color scheme two. So now they're all color coded. So now I'm just gonna build backwards just because that's easier for me for this example. Let's add a helix for our track two here and then have it come up here and have a flat piece of track where the station should go. And then for our yellow track, I'm gonna do something a little bit steeper here. So let's do something like this. And let's try adding a holding brake. That would be kind of fun because some of those water slides have a little like uh, floor that drops out from underneath you. So with that built, uh, we can change it to the dinghy slide and you'll see that the helix and the holding brake obviously don't uh, show up. So to fix that, let's work on the holding brake. So what I'm gonna do here is actually delete the holding brake for now. And as you can see here, it's gone missing from the vertical drop. Uh, so let's go back to the dinghy slide and build a closed steep piece where the holding brake drop should have gone. Now go back to vertical drop coaster, make sure disable clearance checks are turned on and rebuild that holding brake drop over the steep piece. 
And then for the helix, let's use color scheme three and just paint that for now, and we'll deal with that later. So now we need to make sure all of our uh, tracks have their lift in the back. So make sure you have the chain lift turned on for these pieces, uh, but build your lift chain backwards from the where the stations will go. So once they're underground like that, uh, we should be good. So now we just need to connect the ends of them. So let's have those go back underground here. So our orange track will go underground and then the yellow track will go underground. So what we want to have happen now is we want to delete some of this red track and we want to connect the red with the orange track. So once that's connected, go to the end of the orange track and make sure disable clearance checks is turned off. You don't want to accidentally merge any tracks. But now we want the orange track to come all the way around and connect with the yellow track. So once you have that done and it's connected with the yellow, we can go to the end of the yellow and we want the yellow to connect with the red. So this is where you actually have to go underneath the other track because there's a little bit of a crossover and looks like I didn't make the turns wide enough so I'm going to add some S-bends here so the red will give it enough room. So all right, so now the yellow can connect with the red. So once that's done, we have one giant continuous circuit where all of the tracks connect with each other in just one humongous loop. So red into orange, orange into yellow, yellow back into red. So with that finished, we can actually delete all of those flat pieces of track and put in our station on the red track right now. And so the red goes to orange, orange goes to yellow, yellow goes to the end. So we want the yellow track to be where we put the station for the exit. Uh, and this is for stat purposes when we calculate the stats. So now we can test the ride and you can see it in the dinghy slide visuals. It looks pretty nice. You can't see the lifts though. The lifts are uh, not gonna show up because they're vertical, but everything's working as it should. It's a very slow lift. So what you can do is actually turn on the cheats and you can uh, unlock operating limits and then we can change the lift to 10 miles per hour and that will make it run a little bit faster so let's see uh oh oh no so <laughs> whoops i think i misspoke so uh let's see what happened here so apparently we don't want the lift speed to be 10 miles per hour because the dinghies sometimes will fly off so that's a little too fast so you actually want the lift speed to be something like eight miles per hour uh, they shouldn't fly off the track at eight miles per hour just don't go up to 10. so now we can see here actually with the yellow track they go into that holding break where they're kind of hidden in the enclosed uh, dinghy slide so that looks kind of cool but it looks like everything's working and and the stats calculated. So we have some pretty good stats with 10 drops because the dinghy went through all of the different tracks. Uh, so it gives you really nice stats. Otherwise, if we had stations where all of the stations are supposed to be, the stats would be really poor. Now the next step is to open the tile inspector and we're going to select the uh, exit station right here and we're gonna copy it in the tile inspector and then move to that flat track where the station should be on the orange, delete it and then paste in the station piece and do the same for the red. Take the flat track, delete it and then paste the exit station. So it's three of the stations pasted side by side. We're gonna do the same thing for the entrance station. So copy it in the tile inspector, go to the orange track. We're gonna paste it there, delete the orange track, but make note of what the base height is so you can raise up the station track piece to the correct height. Now I'm gonna copy this track, go here to the yellow track, and we're going to paste it. And note that the yellow track is at 38 base height. So let's move up the station track to 38 base height. So they are all lined up. And now we can test it and the stats should remain the same because we didn't do any construction. We just used the tile inspector. And now I'm going to actually up the number of dinghies to, I'm gonna try 16 dinghies, so that should be enough. So now we need to make the helix appear because you can't see that helix. So we're actually going to open up the ride editor plugin. If you don't have it, I've linked it in the video description. But with the ride editor plugin open, make sure that dinghy slide is selected or click the menu here and select the ride. And now we want to change it to alternative color scheme number three. Hit ride type, make sure that's checked. And we are going to select the bobsleigh coaster and hit apply and that will draw in the graphics right there for our helix. So now I can just update the colors for color scheme three so it matches. So now we have a beautiful ride here added some scenery. I'm going to change it to no entrance, no platform, so it looks a little nicer there. Just a few things to tidy up here, so now uh, we can open the tile inspector and make these station pieces here at the bottom invisible, so just hit the eye icon right there, so just uh, select the track there and hit the eye, and let's do it for the last one, so now the 
exit stations are invisible. Now, one thing you might notice uh, is that the guests kind of walk on water, a little bit of a Jesus syndrome there. So if we move the exit building, we can try and mitigate that. So in the tile inspector, I can copy the exit, paste it here, hit make usable, and then delete the other one. And we can add the path in there like so. So now the guests aren't going to walk on water quite as much because they're gonna just walk towards the exit building from each station. So it's not a perfect solution, but I think this is the best we can do for now. So you can see they kind of walk on water a little bit, but they go straight to that exit. So I think we can just add a little bit more scenery here. Uh, add some path there just to make it look nice. Now when it comes to the entrance building, guests will always enter here and then teleport up to the dinghy slide that they're trying to get on. So here you'll see they're gonna walk on and go to the orange one. So they just kind of teleport up to it. Uh, so they're always going to enter on the same level as the entrance building. Now if I close it, it's only gonna let me build the entrance building on that original station. I can't build it on the other copied stations. It's only gonna let me build it at the level that the original station platform was at. Uh, so just be aware when you do build your original station. Another warning, if you need to delete the stations for whatever reason, always use the construction window and delete them. Because if you use the tile inspector, although that is the method that we use to paste the stations, if you use the tile inspector to delete the original station right here, if we delete it, you're gonna run into some issues because even though uh, we can delete the entrance building as well, but it's always gonna recognize that station one still exists if you delete it with the tile inspector. Even if I delete with the construction window, the uh, final station piece, that station one is always gonna show up. It's not gonna let me open the ride because it's gonna miss that entrance building. So it's just gonna be a huge issue. Even if I build another station, it's gonna show up as station three and the station one is gonna exist as a ghost station and the ride will have to be rebuilt, uh, deleted and rebuilt. So just be careful. And that is our working ride. So you can pretty much do whatever layouts you want. You could add more than three tracks if you wanted, but this is basically the method of connecting all of the tracks and copying the stations to make it operate as one ride with one queue line. Now I've used this method to make this giant jumble spaghetti bowl mess of a water slide. So there's four slides here, but it's all one giant track and they empty out in two different pools at the bottom. So I really like this ride. But here you can see if I change it to the vertical drop coaster, you can kind of see the inner workings of what's going on underneath it all. So how all of the tracks are connected. So it does kind of look like a mess, but if you're just uh, patient and methodical when you build it, uh, these things aren't too difficult, even though they look crazy. And here is another example. So this is actually two different rides. They're mirror images of each other. And if I change it to the vertical drop coaster, you can also see underneath uh, how you how I built these rides. So it's pretty simple. We basically just have a color coded uh, connection of paths or track underground. So it's really not that difficult. You just gotta line everything up like I showed you in the video. But if this does seem really difficult or you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Also consider watching my giant slide tutorial, which is very similar to this one. So it will help you understand the steps that I showed you in this video. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. It really helps out the channel and consider becoming a YouTube or Patreon member where you will receive early access to all my latest videos and other benefits or check out the the links in the video description to grab some of my RCT2 swag and merch. And as always, make sure to subscribe because next time I'm going to show you how to build an Aqua Twist, which also doubles as my spinning teacups ride 2.0. So stay tuned for more.